Wildly popular pivot for March Sadness. March is on, Dan. I've heard from our fans. And while I don't want to discount uh, negative feedback, there's been a little bit here, but generally overwhelmingly positive with what we've done with March Sadness, which I have to remind you is all presented by Get Your Guide. Discover over 100,000 unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at GetYourGuide.com. We thank them for presenting this March Sadness. And as you know, there's all sorts of different regions that's not at all confusing whatsoever. They all have to do with the show. And given that we're entering our 20th year doing this together, it's nice nostalgia for all of us. So, Dan, out of the club region, we have a 6v11 matchup of two really popular sounds. Up first, the number six seed. You think I'm going to shoot the fair one with Ben? You out your mind, nigga, 6'10". I'm going straight. What I'm gonna do is ridiculous. I'm from the danger zone. You gotta Google. You got that. Oh, go go Google <laughs> Lennox Avenue, the danger zone. Go Google Lennox Avenue, the danger zone, 139th Street. See what see what we do for a living. <laughs> and when you come back next week, you'll be like, "Oh, Cam, you from over there?" <laughs> uh, I tell from San Francisco, Pearl Hill projects. Oh, I spent some time oh, in some oh, other shit. kind of project. No, I spent some time in some other kind of projects yeah, too. <laughs> Yo, oh, let me tell you something about I that can real tell quick. You this. Go ahead. You ain't never heard nobody f with me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how me and you get in the beef? I ain't even, I'm not beefing <laughs> with you. How me and you get in the beef? We're talking about I'm Ben Simmons. You. I'm going to help you with Ben. All right, my <laughs> there we go. That's my man. Dan, that <laughs> is uh, from the uh, Is What It Is podcast. That is OJ kind of referencing that, uh, you know, he's, he's murdered a couple of people potentially. I don't know what that was, but we don't want beef. That is the six seed? That is the six seed. And I got to tell you, I think the committee got this one wrong because it goes against an 11 seed. And I think the 11 seed is far stronger. Here is Stone Cold Steve Austin entering oh, a cold plunge. Come on. Ah, ha, 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 ha. God damn it. Whoa. Uh, uh, ah! God damn it! Hey, what? Uh, hey, what's up, up? God damn it! <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? It's Steve coming to the Broke Skull Ranch. I got this. Uh, my new therapy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Steve coming to the Broken Skull Ranch. Hey, what's up, everybody? Steve coming to the Broken Skull Ranch. Uh, about to do my first cold plunge and renew therapy. Uh, my shop says 43 degrees right now, so I'm sure the water is sub 50. I was going to start off at 50. It's going to be a little bit colder than that. And uh, we're going three minutes here. Once it gets on to 12 and five, four, three, two, down we go. God damn. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha. Son of a bitch. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. That's it. He's out. Oh, He's out. Mother. No three minutes. He's not doing three minutes. He's doing a few uh, seconds. <laughs> gonna revisit this mother. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you could head over to Levitard AF and actually your voice can be heard because if you're like us and think that unjustly that's an 11 seed, you don't have to count on an upset in the actual tournament for this to advance. You can vote for it yourself in the bracket of death bracket, which is all costume punishments. We have a number two seed, which is Greg Cody dresses Harry Styles. I've actually never seen this before and I don't know how we got Harry Styles there. That looks pretty bad from Greg. And that is going up against Stu Gatz from My Nightmares, dressed up as Larry Bird. So these are just all costumes in the bracket of death. This is a two-seed Harry Styles, Greg Cody, uh, looking uh, slightly like Jerry Seinfeld uh, as Tony. Tony as Jerry Seinfeld earlier this week. Yeah, you know. <laughs> looks like the girl from the Drew Carey show. 
Uh, and Stugatz as Larry Bird was truly disturbing, incidentally, because 15 seed I do think is low, but I think it's just general disgust that got us there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Historically that inaccurate. Historically inaccurate costume. I believe Bird was wearing the the home whites, and he wasn't wearing a Travis Matthew hat at the time. Stugatz has worn like three costumes in six years. Like I don't know how All settled. he skated on this. All settled. Uh, the number three seed in this bracket of death is represented by Lucy Rodin. It was a run it back uh, from our show's illustrious history. You once did this as Bobby Petrino, Dan, but I think Lucy took it next level. A lot more scars on her face, and that is a three seed. It's going up against probably the, the committee got this one wrong, sleeper. too. Sleeper. This is a giant sleeper. This is one of the funniest moments to have happened. Me talking to Rob Delaney and us crying about sad things while Billy made an appearance as the number 14 seed is as funny a thing as has happened on a show the last six we months. We have a video clip to actually speak to how um, how creepy and uh, and weird this entire segment was and how useful the costume actually was to get in this segment off the ground. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's a heart that works. It's out now in paperback. And I have not talked to you since no. this happened to me, so I will tell you that uh, okay. the places that you and I talked about the loss of your son at the time that we talked about it, uh, I didn't yeah. even know my brother was sick when we had that conversation. Ugh. And in the time since then, my brother has died. And I will tell you Jesus. that the pain of that um, has been, I don't know what your pain is exactly, right? I can't possibly know, even yeah. though um, yeah. you've written a book. But uh, I feel like I lost a son because I raised him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's brutal. And I'm glad that you are talking about it i'm so incredibly sorry i'm glad that you're crying and that people <laughs> can hear that because the the pain there's an old-timey is... baseball player here rob there's, <laughs> like what yes thank you like i can't cry <laughs> that's a 14 how <laughs> there's no way how? That may win the entire thing. It's no, un, it that's just so final good. 14. That is a national title threat right there. I don't know how we top that. Oakland. We probably should have closed with that. But, uh, Dan, uh, you dressed up as a really unique costume that I hadn't seen anyone do, especially after the holiday, uh, the Halloween season. Uh, Dan decided to dress up as Cowboy Ken, which, again, hadn't been done before, hasn't been done since. Great job by you. You're an eight seed. I don't know how you're that much higher than old-timey baseball it's player. Crazy. That's crazy to me. Uh, my my bracket was wildly disrespected in a way that enrages me. I don't have enough in the tournament. This was not one of the best costumes I've worn. Who am I up against? You're up against uh, a group shot here of the Anchorman News team. So that's a, that's a lot of people. Man. I am literally holding that suit together. You have no idea. The real torture, what was going on around my waistline. That was the actual punishment. Also, perspective, people. Jeremy is not even remotely close to being that much taller than me. It's all perspective. I'm very tall. What is in Jeremy's left pocket? I don't know. Throw that image back up. I didn't, I didn't notice what was in his left pocket. I just noticed that uh, we were essentially the same height. And as you know, that is not accurate. Many people say I'm one of the tallest people they've ever met. Uh, put it in, this, in this photo, I'm like the shortest guy. That's just all perspective. I am three feet behind the rest of the group, yeah. just so you know. I am a very tall individual. Put it on the poll, please, at Lebitard Show. Is Jack the perfect name for a guy who makes 10 threes off the bench? Uh, Jessica is texting me while you're doing this, Mike, enraged. I don't know how she got this already, enraged at your March midness takes. Uh, and the other thing we haven't talked about is that the women have sold uh, six times as many Final Four tickets as the men. So you you are just attacking so far yesterday's men's bracket is what you're Yeah, attacking. no, in fact, I laid out. I, I'm happy that the women have their day. And I'm, I, I think the women's sport is better than the men's. Yeah. In terms a lot of, quality. of people think that. Right yeah, now. in terms the of star power, that's indisputable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there, there's bad basketball being played all around, and don't hold it against me. You're going to find some dreadful execution in the women's game too. But in terms of physicality, uh, a lot of the stuff that sports fans are drawn to, 
some of these games on, on the women's side of things remind you of like 1980s NBA basketball with the physicality and the refs are just a fish uh, like just terrible the officials are so bad in that sport Gene Serator probably backs every single one of them up many people have written longing for the looks like tournament and I will tell you that as we sit here because Adam McKay is a little bit crazy he has just bombarded me because he's always every year trying to get into our looks like tournament he's just bombarded me with a dozen of these by text do you guys want to hear some of these would these any of these have made the tournament Eric Spolstra looks like a guy on his cell phone you'd walk past while entering a steak restaurant and hear him say damn it Barbara I have a right to see our son that's actually pretty funny. Yeah, it would be funnier bad. if someone read it perfectly, but this is not really giving this ample opportunity to succeed the way that you're doing this. Doris Bur Burke looks like the veteran homicide detective who, while looking at the victim's dead body, says, and I thought I was having a bad day. Also good. It's also good, but we don't have Stu Gatz here. This is not a good situation Caitlin for Caitlin Clark looked like the girl who, after kicking your son's ass, looks at you and says, you want some too, Grandpa? Roger, do that. Roger Goodell looks like the mayor who, after after warning you of a zombie outbreak, says, can't this wait until after the election? <laughs> These are good. 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 These are good. This yeah. makes me miss the old tournament. They're double seeds for sure, like double digit seeds. You should you probably should have given it some space from the actual tournament. Dan Lebitard looks like a cruise ship captain who can't swim. Well, I know a lot of Cuban men your age that can't. Greg Cody looks like he moved My on. My dad. Greg Cody looks like he moved on to a houseboat in the 80s to meet ladies and solve crimes, but then realized the crime rate's pretty low and women don't hang out on boat docks. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to give the people an idea of why Adam McKay never makes the tournament. Yeah, but those are actually pretty solid. I, yeah, that, that's solid. A, he's, we just didn't have the device of Sugat's laughing. He's yeah. very good. No. Adam McKay? He's yeah, he's solid good. at writing jokes. He's very good at comedy. His that resume would suggest that he's pretty good at it. That is correct. Yeah. Hey, if you're doing if you're not doing anything this weekend, uh, Disney Plus threw up X Men '97, and I know this means nothing to Lucy and Tony. It probably means nothing to you either because you're out out of the demo. But holy cow, did they nail this show? Oh, it's so good, and they have the original theme song and cast. Do do yourself a favor if you're like 30 to 40 and watch X-Men 97. I haven't been talking about this. Uh, it has been a great controversy in my neighborhood and has been national and I think international news that Miami Beach uh, broke up very publicly with spring break. Some parties uh, burn too hot and all parties, the best parties, have to die. And Miami Beach was very aggressive. There was some policing that was excessive. There were some things being done over the last few years and have been done over the last few years to try to militarize and police that area in a way that has been felt aggressively un-American, uh, has felt controversial because you had the issue of the party was very black and roiling. It was fun, and spring break had a lot of drunkenness in it, a lot of crime. This is different from Memorial Day weekend and some of the racist policing habits that were around that, but much of what has happened around spring break and the drinking has been partying that has resulted in something that feels like state emergency or actually is state emergency, declared state emergency, and also there have been in that stretch of very public tourist Miami Beach land, there have been some shootings and death that has made, as the area has been actively blighted, has made it dangerous. So, over the last month, what has been parking rates that are super high or just unavailable, traffic so bad that nobody would want to be there, Miami Beach is largely quiet and empty the way that it felt at the very beginning of the pandemic when everyone was in their homes. Not like that quite, but the quietest spring break you will ever have on that area of land because they've policed the holy hell out of it. And they told you they were going to do it, and they told you they were going to do it with a commercial where they, it went viral where they broke up. Miami Beach publicly broke up with spring break. Hey, we need to talk. This isn't working anymore. And it's not us, it's you. 
We just want different things. Our idea of a good time is relaxing on the beach. Hitting up the spa. Or checking out a new restaurant. You just want to get drunk in public and ignore laws. Do you even remember what happened last March? That was our breaking point, so we're breaking up with you. And don't try to apologize and come crawling back. This isn't safe, so we're done. And just so you know, we're serious. This March, you can expect things like curfews, bag checks, and restricted beach access, DUI checkpoints, $100 parking, and strong police enforcement for drug possession and violence. Whatever it takes, because it's time to move on. Maybe we can talk when you're done with your spring break phase, but until then. $100 parking, so it's cheaper than it used to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They made it initially $100, then they just stopped providing parking. They just closed the parking Well, they garages. closed the parking unless you're a resident of Miami because actually last weekend, Lehman wanted to go fishing on Miami Beach, oh, and wow. we couldn't find anywhere to park because all the lots were blocked off. So we eventually like pulled up to one of them, and there was like a parking guy there, as some sort of like a, attendant. attendant, but yeah. not really like a police officer, but maybe security guard. I'm not sure what he was. But They're trying to inconvenience everybody correct. into not wanting but to be there, and they've Succeeded. was completely empty so we pulled up and we were like can we park here if we live in miami and he was like yeah go ahead and we we're like okay so we got like a primo parking spot right on the beach it was very bizarre but i do think we need to reiterate how embarrassing this commercial is yeah. like what those actors they were just like things that no one would ever say it's a big greg corny Ultra will solve everything this weekend. We'll just oh, get great. all the drugs and the drinking and the chaos and the overabundance. It'll just be, it won't be on the beach. It'll just be, because this is, it's, it's on the bay, Dan. Yeah. It's, 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 it'll be right across from here, right? Wasn't there a mass herding? They did it on Key Biscayne a couple of years ago and they that realized the traffic disaster that was where people end up walking miles because everything is so spread out here. And if you don't have access to traffic, you're going to be proper bleeped. One of my British friends who covers Formula One is coming to the Miami Grand Prix, and he's he was asking me for you know some some info on Miami before he plans his trip. And the first thing he asked was, "Is public transit reliable in Miami?" And I was like, ah! <laughs> "If you go to what? downtown to Kendall, yes, absolutely." <laughs> Call me Greg Corny. The ultra thing was weird because they like were like, "We don't want this in downtown anymore," and then they just put it in Key Biscayne. And they're like, "Oh, we now have a." billion people on this little island no way to get them out of there and they shut down the road so people had to literally walk to rickenbacker yeah. if you don't know what that means go look at rickenbacker causeway it is like 47 miles they stranded of people not, 47 they, they, miles they, they, people it, go it, and they it, run that for exercise like all the time you've never done that. Greg Cody can do it in six minutes it's Dude, very steep it's very steep it goes up and it's it a goes nice down. little run you should do it tony i've done it you haven't i, I have done it Neither one of you have done. I definitely the, the, have the, done the, the it. Run, I can show you a the, picture. I take the, if you go and you run it, you have to take a picture. The run <laughs> on you ran. Both What's of you. What's the point have, of running it if you don't take a picture of both it? Both of like you got to run off. Both of you have run, run on the Rickenbacker Causeway. You're both. It's beautiful. Yeah. It is. It's nice. The so, people who ride bikes or roller on that are insane. Frankie rides out of their bikes. Mind. Straight you up. show me what? videos. Of He's him a crazy person. Driving up. I respect you, Frankie. You're crazy. Uh, we don't have a lot of strips of land more beautiful than that. However, late at night on drugs, walking on a highway is not the way to traverse that piece of land, no, which is how the people no. were trying to do it after Ultra Lash. Still year. safer than riding a bike on it, though. Well, a lot little, of people die there. Yes. dinner at Rusty Pelican. That's still Miami lovely, Miami I think. Basin. Still lovely. Uh, Miami is a weird place, though, and I don't think you guys are going to have to walk me through this story because you were telling me that there is a very stubborn resident in Coral Gables that simply refuses to allow all of the developers who are coming down here. We don't have any more space to sell that isn't straight up. And so, because Miami is wildly overcrowded, it's way too expensive, and way too many people from everywhere are coming down here now. And in Coral Gables, there's been a plot of land that has been overdeveloped. And what is the backstory of the resident that simply refuses to be bought and so now has a neighborhood home that is planted in the middle of what looks like a giant straight up in the sky resort? This visual that we're showing is crazy because you can't really see because it's literally in the shadows, which is what this NPR uh, story, the headline was, a Florida man who refused to sell his home to a developer now lives in the shadows. 
literally because he's next to like this huge high rise wow. and there's his little house and it used to be in a development in Coral Gables and then a developer came and bought all the other houses and everyone you know let you know sold their houses to the developer but he refused and he said that his mom or his dad were was sick and he didn't want to move and he couldn't move and basically I'm not I'm not leaving so they built this entire development around his house and now he lives across the street from this humongous Lowe's hotel and the pictures he lives of inside it of it are not crazy. across the street not across in the it. street he lives in in the, the middle courtyard. of it. He lives, right? It's not across the street. It, this person's home, it makes no sense where this person's home is. Be, we should try and get this person on the show and ask, uh, because this must be emotional for him. He will not sell his parents, the, the memory of his parents. Sure. But, <laughs> a que punto? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they offered him $500,000 cash. They offered him to pay up for another house in, in the Gables, which if you don't know, the Gables is like one of the most expensive real estates in anywhere in Florida, right? Plus a car. Like, they were giving him a lot of what? things for him to just be like, yeah, okay, sell it, whatever. It's a bad well, they business. Don't, they move. don't bad want that move. there. They don't want his home there. They want to be able to not. put something else $500,000 cash. And they were going to pay for a house in the Gables. At what point is this guy just bad at business? No, $500,000 is not enough for that property. <laughs> no, Billy, they were going to give him... 500 cash. They're going to buy him another house in the Gables. He no. claimed in the story that he didn't trust the developers. And I don't either. I don't necessarily, you know, no, blame him for that. The like, developers will pay for that. That's what they want. They'll pay for that. They'll pay whatever amount of money that they, they said they'll pay. what if they say pay. they're going to pay for it and then they don't? Then you take them to court. I mean, that's really easy. That, which yeah. costs money. I know, but you're going to get it on the back end. Tony's got it all figured Everything out. is very easy yeah. in this world it, that it, Tony has when, created. When the, when the developer comes to me and says, hey, this rickety house, we're going to build a Lowe's hotel on it. Perfect. Oh, you guys are building the whole for the Lowe's hotel? Excellent. These are my demands. I want $10 million or a house over there that I pick in Coral Gables, and I'll sell it to you. Write the check. Okay, you've perfect. Got, you've got leverage in this situation. Absolutely. Unless you're not willing to sell at all, which he isn't. And evidently, there is no price because someone has stopped negotiating if that's still there. That hotel does not want him there. It's really weird. And they also, like, he lived in this house while this entire massive construction was going on around him. And That's it was like 24-7. Stubborn, stubborn Like 24-7 construction noise. And then his mom was yeah. sick and needed to go to the hospital. And the street was obstructed. And the 9-11, or the emergency vehicles right. couldn't get oh. there. It, yeah. 911. Yeah. Those are two different. You Never got that. That's a tricky one. Forget, that's a yeah, that's right. nine, You say it nine eleven, it means one thing. You say it nine one one, it means another. But it's the same thing. That's at what fault. point is it? At what point is it like, hey, my mom's sick, but I can't drive her to the hospital because there's a crane in the way, because I didn't sell the house. It, it like, has no. to be inconvenient. I will tell you guys because I'm I'm trying to find a place that I can stay. It's hard to find stuff. It really is in South Florida that's available, and I'm trying to find while while I'm trying to have a home built. I'm trying to find a place to stay, and it is hard to find anything that doesn't have something under construction next to it that you're. That even if you're trying to buy temporary housing or, or, or rent for a little while, everything that you want that would be in an affordable price range to anybody, to a human being, has construction happening next to it that you have to endure while you're sleeping or around whatever your days are. My mother-in-law's house in Westchester has an efficiency next door for rent. No construction, Ooh. if interested. You interested? Uh, yes. Let's see. Let me see. I want to see one of the... Does it have a virtual tour? <laughs> he could FaceTime me. It's an efficiency in Westchester. Yes. If it I has have... a functioning toilet, I'd be shocked. Does it have construction next to no it? No construction. Probably it... like 400 square feet, though. Has... Look, you guys have certainly noticed that Miami has become, in every respect, just like America, less and less affordable. No correct? Way. Everywhere you're going, everything is more expensive that's than it used to man. be. Correct? What? what are you talking about? That, that's obviously not true. Everywhere you go. Including Westchester, if Hialeah is the least one of the top five least affordable, Westchester, you can't even buy something for a million dollars in Westchester anymore. <laughs> Nothing is affordable anymore. Correct? Raises? <laughs> huh? Could use one. Yeah, I'm trying to buy a house, Dan. You know, I was in Palmetto you, Bay is really nice. That's what I'm trying to look at. Palmetto, you guys, Palmetto yeah. Bay, you're crazy. Palmetto Bay, <laughs> you're a silly boy. With the raise, though, I mean, we can make something happen in Palmetto Bay. You what? should represent this guy since you have it all figured out. No, but well, the problem is he's not listening to sound common advice. That's that's the problem. So I he should hear you. That's I should knock on his door, to be honest. But I feel yeah. like it's already gone. We're too far gone on this. He's already staked his claim. This is like, stubborn principle gone awry, correct? There's, you have to have a price on this at some point. There has to be a price. The price is you pay off my house in the Gables. How about this? Let me paint a picture for you guys. 
He's going to die at some point. Oh, right? wait. Oh, come on. Don't wish come that upon that man. You don't know that. You don't know that come he's going to die. He's going to live forever. You don't my know that. He's, he's going to live die. forever. I forgot. The, if, if he doesn't have any kids, the house is going to go into probate with the government, and they're going to sell it anyway. 